Okay, so Impact was uh, not that good, you know. It was, it was okay, but it kind of bordered on suck. You know, there was some decent shit in there, but really I, it was kind of boring in a way. Let's see what happens. So they start off with an Ace and Eights promo. You know, last week Angle got attacked, so you know they, they want to talk about that. Devon starts things off, which is okay. You know, he's decent on the mic. Nothing special. Then Garrett Bischoff gets on. Thank God he gets off the mic very fast, like five seconds on the mic. Then he passes it to what to Wes Briscoe. And this is where shit goes downhill. This motherfucker was fucking boring on the mic. He sounded like the whiniest fucking bitch I ever heard. Why am I, why did it take me two years to get in the company? I'll tell you why. Because he ain't worth dick, son. He ain't worth fucking dick. And I'll tell you why. This promo is a shining example of why it took this guy so long to make it into a major company. This guy, you should hear him in the fucking promo trying to do an evil laugh, an attempt at an evil laugh. And I do mean attempt. Emphasis on the word attempt. <laughs> he sounded like motherfucking Krusty the Clown. I mean, it sounded like the lamest fucking laugh I ever heard. I mean, you want to be a heel and do a little evil laugh? That's okay. But you want to, I mean, God, does this guy have to jobberfy every single fucking thing he does? Not only is he a shitty fucking wrestler, but he can't cut a promo worth a damn. All he had to do was explain why he, what he did to, to Angle. And he can't even get through that without a turn to fucking shit. Horrible fucking promo. You know, this guy just looks like a jobber. You, you, you see him, and he just streams jobber. I mean, man, he ain't fucking worth the goddamn fucking shit. Can't do anything right. I mean, he should just fucking off himself already. I mean, goddamn, if the only thing you're cut out for in life is wrestling, and you can't do that right, what's the point of living? That's what I say. Then we start off with a match. It's a pretty good match. It was RVD, Zima Ion, and Kenny King. RVD wins for doing dick, basically. You know, Ion and Kenny King, this is the type of match you don't see in WWE. You haven't seen it in a long time. It's very spotty, and I love it. You know what? I like spot fests. So fucking sue me. I like, you know, matches where, uh, you know, they're moving around really quickly. Oh, they don't sell enough in this. It's fucking fake. Gives a fuck who's selling what. Nowadays, I'm just fucking happy that they're putting on a good show. Because, you know, something fucking wrestling sucks so much nowadays. You know, that when you see a lot of moves being used, you know, fucking WWE all... All you get's fucking two moves per match. You know this match was like five, six minutes. And he did like fucking 50 moves in the span of that little time there. WWE, you get like 20 uh, minute matches. And you get like two moves. And those moves don't even count as fucking moves. They're fucking uh, chin locks and, and just shitty looking punches. Not even good looking punches. At least in this, you were seeing fucking tornado DDTs. Fucking, uh, you know, tope con helos to the outside and shit like that. And the thing is, I don't understand, this was a, a good match. I really enjoyed it. But fucking RVD holding on his title for as long as he has. You know, I, I can understand the concept of why RVD is the champion. Because, you know, basically they want him to work with the young guys. RVD is, you know, basically let's call him what he is. He's a legend. I mean, he's been around the wrestling business for a long time. He's put on some fantastic matches back in the day. But notice what I'm saying, back in the day. This guy is past his fucking prime by fucking five goddamn years. Let me tell you something. When he had that match with Orton in WWE, he should have just went out like that. Went out gracefully. RVD went out, you know, as being a good wrestler. And that's what you remember. Him putting on good matches. Now he's moving around at half the speed. You look at this matchup, and you see that he's cut his moveset down by at least, like, fucking uh, three quarters. I mean, he's only got one-fourth of the moves he used to do in his current moveset. The rest is just punches and elbows. And, uh, you know, these guys are moving around. They're, like I said, performing, like, you know, fantastic moves, moving around at, like, fucking light speed in there. And RVD could barely keep up with them. And he could tell by the finish. A good finish and everything, good clean finish. But you could see that RVD was rushing so much to hit his finish in the pin. He didn't even buy the fucking pump for the for the fucking frog splash. You know, he had to like fucking rush and just dive on in there. You could see that he just 
just can't keep up with them. So, you know, just fucking end it already. I understand that they want to, like, you know, a big name is champ, but how is anybody supposed to, supposed to fucking grow in this company if, you know, these fucking old fucking geezers are always holding the goddamn belts and holding everybody down and taking up all the time on the TV? But a good match nonetheless. Okay, so then we get... There was some UK competition going on. You know, this thing's going on. It's like some kind of TNA tough enough. You know, it's not enough that we got fucking gut check going on. But there's some other type of reality shit going on in the fucking other country. And then we don't even know about this. So how are we even supposed to care? Who fucking cares? Some guy wins it. I don't know. He's like pretending to be Nigel McGuinness. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, then we get uh, James Storm defeating Jesse. A squash match. A pretty entertaining squash match. James Storm, I don't know what he's doing. You know, he's not allowed to compete for the title. He's not allowed to be in the title picture until, you know, uh, Bound for Glory. It's just like, you know, he's wandering around. He's saving people. He's like the unofficial superhero of TNA. Some type of superhero cowboy. Yeah, you know, I like James Storm and thinking they're just wasting him. Uh, I, I mean, isn't there something else he could do? You know, they kind of like dug themselves deep in a hole with this one. They, they say in their storylines, he's not allowed to fight for the belt. And now they have nothing to do with him. So I don't see what the fucking point of that is, you know. Uh, I think they really fucked themselves up bad. Uh, then we get a, a tag title match. It's... Aries and Bobby Roode versus uh, Chavo and Hernandez. They win the belts here. Um, this match was kind of fucking sucky. Uh, it was okay in some parts, but then I just got really bored. Aries and Roode just slow it down there. One part where they're just holding Chavo and Camo clutches. You know, the end was good with a swerve. You think Roode's going to walk out, but then he comes back. Uh, Aries surprises everybody by hitting his indie finisher, the uh, 450 splash. So, a good finish. They win the belts. They got them off those jobbers already. What a fucking terrible idea it was to put the tag belts on them. The belts, you know, don't mean dick. Them winning the belts doesn't mean anything. You know, unless they're going to go along with that, that storyline uh, where they, if they eventually end up winning all the belts that TNA has to offer, that could be something like they're taking over TNA you know there's so many people taking over TNA at the moment though I mean isn't that Ace and Nate's job wouldn't it be better if like so someone uh in in Ace and Nate's like was winning the belts if they won the tag titles and they won the X division belt and someone was the world champ but they you know they're just not thinking here I mean, like, you got, like, these guys are trying to take over, and then you got a biker game that's trying to take over. All right, who's the fuck is taking over this company? They got to come to some agreement. Get their shit straight. I mean, come on. Who's fucking going to, who's here, who's going to take everything over? There's hostile takeovers on every single fucking minute of this show. Uh, you know, so it was all right. Uh, then it's Tess Mocker defeating Tara. You know, um... There was a lot of ass cheeks in this match, so it was pretty good. Um, Tess Mocker wins. You know, it's one of the great things about TNA is that they wear less clothing than the Divas over in WWE, so that's okay. A decent women's match. If we're rating it on wrestling, it was okay. You know, passable shit. Then the guy who won the, um, the UK Challenge or whatever the fuck it was called comes out. He's basically a Nigel McGuinness ripoff. Some, you know, punk rock looking style Brit. And, you know, that's okay. He's just a lot shorter than Nigel McGuinness. Uh, weighs at least 50 pounds less than he did. Um, uh, Robbie T turns on Robbie E, apparently. And, you know, it's all uh, UK, you know, uh, feel good moment here. <laughs> Nothing too good. Uh, then we get our main event. It's Bully Ray and Sting defeating Devon and Doc in a tables match. This matchup honestly wasn't terrible. It was okay. They kept things moving. You know, it wasn't like a, an alright match. But what the fuck? 
with Bully Ray hulking up at the end, that was just so fucking lame. And it just shows that, you know, when it comes to, like, looking at things from the big picture, overall with TNA, it's just all about fucking Hulk Hogan and pleasing that motherfucker's big ego. Now, Hulk Hogan is one of the greatest of all time. One of my personal favorites. The guy is the definition of being a legend. But the guy's got to get the fuck out of the fucking business already. Holy fucking shit. When he's not... So, you know, I'm not going to wrestle matches, but I'm going to make people do my mannerisms and shit. Get the fuck out. I mean, seriously. Enough with this. This Bully Ray bullshit is just fucking terrible. And Ace and Nate's losing. Holy shit. I've never seen a dominant group like this. A big fucking group. A big biker gang losing all the time. You know, Mr. Uh, Anderson, he joins Ace and Nate's. It's a big to-do. Who is he going to join or not? He loses in the cage match. Now, he gets away with that because, you know, it was a cage match and it was really good. You know, so that was passable. Okay that he loses his debut as Ace and Nate's gimmick and all that shit but this table match I mean you know they fucking lose again there's this whole big promo that this is going to be their year and so far this year they've lost every fucking match they've been in it, pretty much they might have won like one match but then, I mean come on guys this shit's fucking ridiculous losing all the time and Hogan is all over this shit get his fucking you know, just disgustingly tanned ass off my fucking TV already. And his goddamn daughter with her goddamn fucking terrible acting. Get that fucking hooker off my TV! <sighs> so as you can see, there was a lot of things on this show that upset me. But it wasn't terrible. If anything, you know, overall, it was more enjoyable than Raw as a whole. Because the only thing decent on Raw was the fucking Jericho Punk match. Everything else is fucking torture. This show was, you know, better. I was more entertained and it was a lot shorter than three hours. So, yeah, better than Raw technically, I guess. Uh, you know, looking at things overall. So, there you go. Nothing to get excited about, but it was all, you know, it was alright. 